Welcome to Twisted Liquid RC Boats. Good day everybody and welcome back to Twisted Liquid RC Boats and the continuation in our Zipkits SLR Missile Thunderboat build. Today guys, we're going to conquer a chore that's called getting our forward non-trips done. And our forward non-trips are pieces that run over our outer chines and our spray rails and blend right up to the nose of our boat right from bulkhead number three so we're going to get creative today after spreading some epoxy and do some very creative clamping I got lots of bonder clamps ready I got lots of large size clamps ready and once again we're adding pieces that are straight in the kit at original and we have to get them curved and bent while we're gluing them in. There's two of them in the kit. One is marked L for the left side on the other side of the boat and one has no markings at all which is the right side one for this side of the boat. Now guys before I started recording this video I made up a couple simple sanding blocks. One with 80 grit one with a hundred grit. Put pieces on both sides. It's just a piece of scrap MDF which keeps everything nice and flat. In the manual it suggests that you sand a very nice gradual edge to blend in with the bulkheads and I've took the time to do so. You can plane this if you want but I decided to sand it instead with two different grits, 80 and 100 and that way I could gradually creep up on the shape I wanted slowly. I didn't want to take too much material off. I wanted to make sure that I kept a nice contour to the boat and I could get my part to fit well. You will notice when you're installing this guy, this piece, I should say, that it does have a little bit of a lip on the top of it and the bottom. There's a little extra material there. So I'm predicting that we're going to have to lightly sand it off once the part is cured. So just get a good fit so you got a good flush fitment with it. And take your time. I'm finding it best in pre-fitting the pieces to start clamping in the rear and slowly work my way forward, gradually bringing it in. So, having said everything we got to do, Let's mix up some epoxy and let's install our first forward non-trip. The next two minutes of video has been fast forwarded and edited as not to bore you guys. You will watch me apply my epoxy to the frame of my boat. You will watch me apply my epoxy to the forward non-trip. Line it up perfectly on the frame of my boat and clamp it in place and leave it to cure. This is the biggest mistake I have made yet in building this boat. My techniques in my epoxy work are not correct at the moment. And this is a learning curve, guys. And maybe I needed to make this mistake in order to learn the lesson that is necessary to build a good boat. I'll leave you guys for a couple minutes and I'll let you see if you can figure out what I'm doing wrong. Guys who have built many boats before will instantly notice the mistake I'm making. I will explain myself in a brief moment.
Okay guys, we got our first forward non-trip finally installed in our home. But let me tell you what happened to me after the video you just watched when I let it cure overnight for a 14 hour period. You guys just watched me put epoxy all along my surface area, put my forward non-trip in, clamp it and let it cure. The next day when I released the clamps, the forward non-trip instantly sprung off the hull. It was not adhered to the forward part of the hull right here. I laid my hand on it just to see how strong it was. It instantly removed itself from the hull completely around the whole part. I was in shock. At first I thought that I had the laminate pulled off the wood. When I took a close look, I didn't. When I looked at the amount of epoxy that was on the surface area where I laid it to, there wasn't very much there. Now guys, here's what I figured happened to me in order for this part not to adhere. I figure that when I laid my epoxy on my surface area, it actually absorbed into my wood and it did not leave a lot of epoxy on the surface for the part to stick with. I proceeded to sand my epoxy off, clean my edges up, I mixed up a second batch of epoxy. But this time, I mixed it with a substance that's known as colloidal silica. Some people call it cabisol, some people refer to it simply as micro balloons. Essentially, it is a fiberglass powder. And when you mix it in with your epoxy and your hardener, you can get it to a very, very good consistency where it's almost like peanut butter. And when you apply it to your edges then, the epoxy sits on top of the surface area where you're laying the part. So the next day, guys, when I mixed up my second batch and reattached it, that's exactly what I done. I used a filler product in with my epoxy. I got a really good coat on the surface area, on the spray rail, and on the outer chine on the bottom. I put a good coat on the forward non-trip. I put it in and I clamped it with 18 clamps. And I let it cure again for a full 24 hour period. I was nervous it was going to pop back off on me. But it didn't. This time it adhered to the boat perfectly. So from here on out guys, going forward, when I do install this second forward non-trip shortly in front of you guys, you're going to see me mix some colloidal silica in with my epoxy. And you're going to notice that my epoxy will sit on the top of the surface wherever I apply it to. It will not necessarily soak in. So guys, now that I got you up to speed on exactly what happened to me on my first forward non-trip, I'm going to spin the boat around and we're going to install the left hand second one. We're going to clamp it the same way, but you are going to notice as I'm mixing my epoxy, I'm going to be adding colloidal silica and I'm going to get it mixed up till it's till a peanut butter consistency. And when this mixes with this epoxy, it turns a really nice white color. So it's very easy to see it. You can actually see around the edge a very nice light white fillet where it stuck everything together. And now the forward non-trip is on there as solid as you want. I can pull the boat with it anywhere I grab it. But it wasn't like that after the first time I done it. So guys, I got you brought up to speed on what happened to me off camera because I want you guys to see everything with this boat and I want you to understand the learning experiences that I'm going through building this boat. You have to remember, this is my first full wooden boat kit. If I make a mistake, I'm going to figure out why it went wrong and I'm going to cure it and I'm going to fix it. I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm really glad that it never hurt the laminate on the inside of the wood at all. I'm really glad that it didn't stick well at all and it did pop off. I don't want a weak boat anywhere where I'm building this. So, I've explained myself good enough. We're ready to spin this boat around and put on our second forward non-trip.
Okay guys, I got a nice batch of epoxy mixed up and I added some colloidal silica to it to thicken it up so that as I'm adhering it to my parts, applying it to them, I can see it sitting on top of the surface and I know that all my epoxy is not going to harden or just soak into my wood and I will have a good adhesion with my forward non-trip when I install it. Now guys, I'm not going to make a mess, but I'm going to put this on just a little bit thick. Because I definitely want this part to stick. And I don't want to have to do it a second time like I already have on the other side. And I have to redeem myself here. I have to make sure that I learn something from this and that if I do this again with sheeting that I'm going to be doing in the future that it is going to sit and work for me because I gotta tell you I was quite shocked when the other side sprung off on me it surprised me I thought I had the part done well but I didn't and I'm learning as I'm going that you have to change things if things don't work for you figure something out that will. And this is a trick that I've seen Scott Myers on M5 Hydroplanes use by thickening up his epoxy. So I'll say thank you Scott while I'm working. I've learned a lot from watching Scott's videos. And guys, I've said it before, I'm not a professional boat builder, but if you really want to learn some stuff about building really nice hydroplanes, wooden kid hydroplanes that are radio controlled. I suggest anybody take a good look at all the videos on the M5 Hydroplanes channel, Mr. Scott Myers. And that's a real good shout out for you Scott because you deserve that. You're a very good guy and a very helpful person when someone needs any advice. So thank you. Now guys, I'm going to get a really good coat of epoxy right up to the nose of this and around the edge of the part. And I don't care how long this takes, I'm getting this done in one shot this time. And when I clamp it and let it sit overnight, it's going to adhere for me. And I'm not going to have to do this one a second time if I have anything to do about it. You have to learn from your mistakes, so you know, if you make a mistake while you're building a boat, guys, change something, make something better, do something different. There's always a simple procedure that will help you, and there's common techniques that are very well known, and tricks like this that can help you get a good coating of epoxy on any surface you want. And adding a little filler like this is a very good one because if you can see and you can notice the epoxy is sitting right up on top of the wood. A little bit is soaking in but it's mainly sitting on top of the wood. Now what's remaining in my cup I would li like to get around the edge of this and up around the forward nose because it's going to have to adhere to this frame very well. I have to work a little quick here now. Get a good coating along the edge of this part. And start to clamp this in place. The thickened epoxy definitely helps, guys. It definitely helps. It's 
still get the scatter hair coming out of these brushes. As you can see, guys, this forward non trip is marked out for the left hand side. Looks like we have just the right amount of epoxy mixed up. Get this last edge here if I can quickly. I don't want this one coming up, guys. I can tell you that. I can promise you that. First little boo boo in the build of the boat. That's what I'll call it. Little boo boo. Not a mistake, but a learning process. Just a good learning process is what it was. Last time I clamped this, guys, I had 18 clamps on it. And I'm planning on using the same type setup this time. And I'm planning on making sure this stays in place. Well, guys, it's time to put the brush in the cup away. And without making too much of a mess, it's time to wiggle this guy in place. Make sure some epoxy squeezes out. Line it up. And start to clamp it. The other thing I notice, guys, is when I use just nothing but epoxy the part could slide easy it is very easy for it to want to slide but when you thicken it up I found that it doesn't want to slide as much on you so I'm just going to start with an initial clamping right here just to get it held so it will stay in place for me it's not tight or anything it's just locating it for me. Now, I want to add a couple clamps between my outer tine and my forward non-trip gently at first. We're going to get this one guys in one shot, I promise you. I'm not having this forward non-trip lifted on me. I don't want to make a mess of the pair. I don't want to hurt it in any way. I want to get it lined up perfectly. Another clamp right here, just to snug it so it doesn't lift or move on me. Guys, I'm not clamping super tight here because that's just on the outer chine. And I still want to be able to wiggle it a little. I'm going to try and get this bend really good on the bottom edge first. And I'm going to start coming in with more clamps right here just to keep it where I want it. Keep moving forward, making sure to clamp to my outer chine as I'm going. I hope I'm not taking you guys out of the picture here. You can see what I'm doing. Not a ton of tension. Still have to bring it in towards this edge of the outer chine. And down a little bit. So I'm going to grab another one of these. Grab this edge right here. that tight and hold that snug for me. I can readjust this one then a little better and a little snugger. Now guys, 
to keep that nose from lifting on me, which I don't want. I am, excuse me, sorry if I'm going back and forth in front of you guys. <coughs> but I'm going to quickly take this nose. And I'm going to make sure that it stays adhered to the front of this boat. Say, guys, you can use this tape to pull parts tight for you and hold them as you're building. I found it an invaluable tool while doing this boat. I found it helps big time for holding parts you want to cure in place. Like I say, I do find you have to rub it in well, but I find that if you do, it will hold your parts while they're curing for you. Guys, I'm just positioning that perfect well again, because I've said many times, if you're going to wiggle anything or do anything, while your glue or your adhesive, your epoxy, is tacky, now is the time to do it. So now that we have an initial good clamping down that edge, let's see if we can't get one here along the top edge. And I can see epoxy squeezing out. I'm going to readjust this rear clamp. promise you that. I can put a little bit of tension on that to pull it in good. get a few more bonder clamps on this edge to hold that in tight. And like I say guys, I don't want this one to have to come off and be done again. No more boo-boos. No more boo-boos. Alright, that's a good line of clamps along the top. We have to get it a little better here in the nose. I can see that already. So we have to go as far forward as we can here with this clamp. That's okay. As long as we can see what we have to fix, we'll do it now. The pad came out my clamp. There we go. down ever so slightly so it's positioned perfect we're tight and snug where we need to be alright add a few more clamps now guys I'll try and get out of your way here Definitely get one here. Just to pull it in against this bulkhead. I 
tension came <coughs> came off that one right there. We can reposition it. Good snug fit on the edge. Feel our lip. Definitely have epoxy everywhere. Clamp it right there. Last time I done it to keep it from sliding up right here on me, which I don't want. I want it staying pretty much down. Nice and flush on the chines. I put that guy in right there. And guys, I got one more clamp here. I'm going to utilize if I can. Right here. Doing much the same thing, preventing it, preventing it from moving up on me. Check my fitment. I need a little more tape right there. We'll get this, guys. We're getting this one in one shot. I don't care how long this episode takes. We're getting this second forward non trip in one shot. And we're not having no errors. No lifting of wood. Where we position it to is where it's going to stay. It's definitely going to adhere to the spray rail. And it's definitely going to adhere to the outer chine. should give us the shape we want to the side of our sponsons. I'm just checking my fit all around. I am going to add more tape here just to make sure this don't move. I don't want it moving at all. And the tape is cheap security. Cheap security. to pull the tape tight guys. Don't be afraid to pull it tight. It'll it'll go tight for you. And it'll pull that right into that floor. Right level if you want it to. I gotta feel my lip around my parts. I can feel a decent smear of epoxy all around these edges. Right here. I know it's making my finger messy, but I'd rather feel it and know it's there. And I can say, guys, that that's our second forward non-trip installed in our boat. We were very accurate on our epoxy mix. We had a decent amount of filler in it. While I got you here, guys, and we're talking about colloidal silica, it is a fiberglass powder. Be very cautious using this material. Do not think that it's some type of drug you can snort or anything like that. It's not. Don't breathe it in. Don't consume it in any way. Be very, very careful using it. I just dabbed a little bit on that crab stick. 
lightly into my cup. Kept mixing until I had a really, really good consistency. And then I applied it to my parts. So guys, that's our second forward non-trip done. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate the channel support. Appreciate everybody watching the build of the Zipkits SLR missile. As I said, four pieces of wood left, guys. We're going to try and do it in one episode. And we're going to have our bottom of our boat completely built. we got a little sanding and filling work to do with some colloidal silica and epoxy. We'll do some filling, some sanding. And we can cut this boat off the jig. We figure we're going to cut it off in a couple more episodes. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate the channel support. Appreciate all the views. Appreciate all the likes, comments. Keep the comments coming. I got no problem with anything. And I can't thank you guys enough is all. So, thanks again from Twisted Liquid RC Boats for watching our build of the Zipkits SLR Missile. And everybody have a really good day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Take care and stay safe.